Hello everyone, this is Evo and welcome to this AFK Journey video. So, Talon just got released yesterday and um, we are starting to see the duality of AFK Journey players. In a sense, people are having very split opinions about Talon because uh, some people are hyping her up to be one of the best characters, right? Massive damage, infinite lives, uh, healer, multifaceted unit with multiple roles. And there's also this bunch of uh, players who are calling her mediocre weak easily countered a lot of issues using her so in today's video i'm gonna answer why there's this duality right i'm gonna talk about why people have such split opinions about her first of all this unit right without a doubt she's op because her skill set is very unique her skill set is the ability to revive infinitely and at the same time being able to damage while healing your team at the same time so she's able to be a dps she's able to be a support she's able to be like a semi tank with the ability to soak up some damage in fact in the harder stages of the duras trial at least from what i can see a lot of players are using talin's infinite heal ability to counter certain stages so if you're talking about her niche itself i think she's very very unique and the ability to revive infinitely would definitely prove to be very useful from a pve perspective right as long as she doesn't die as long as you can buy enough time for her it's quite easy to create a situation where you can easily abuse this infinite heal or infinite resurrection to make her a decent semi tank or even a tank right to just soak up damage for your units so her usefulness or her viability is definitely there but if that's the case why is this unit caught mediocre by some why is she not as good as like maybe skaleta or even freesto let me explain this point um i'll just showcase this with uh, one of the later afk stage so we are at 1329 so one of the later one so i haven't been really pushing on this account i think this is my friend's account so not heavily pushed but i'm just going to showcase one battle with talin and the team and you guys will know what i'm trying to say right in layman's term so i'll just go at two times and talk about it so you guys need to understand how talin functions as a unit she's a damage dealer from her ex weapon skill as well as her ultimate so that is, or those are her two main damage source. So for her ultimate itself, it's a channeling ability, which as you guys can see, can be interrupted by the likes of Lumon, by the likes of Stans, by the likes of Roots, by the likes of Skalita, Danny's Root, by the likes of Iron's ultimate. So yeah, there's quite a bunch of control that is able to just lock her in place and prevent her from channeling her ultimate. At the same time, her ultimate is not only a skill which deals damage, it's also her healing source because when she loses HP, she will heal the other ally, right? And then that's where she will be able to heal by the other allies in order to deal damage to the enemy. So this ultimate fire breathing ability or fire breathing ability is a very important part of a kit. And let us take a look at the damage, right? She deals pretty decent damage here, but the thing is, she's quite easily interrupted. So depending on which stage of the game you're at, depending on your server, the competitiveness of your server, as well as the situation that you are in, right? It is quite easy to answer to Talin. So she's a unit, right? If you can just let her sit there, spew her ultimate, heal, deal damage, she's going to carry you. She's going to be really amazing. But at the same time, if you're doing PvP, for example, just now I stated, there's a lot of units that are meta, and they counter her to a certain extent, right? Units like Arden, Iron, Skalita, even uh, the likes of Danny, right? Even the likes of Damien can interrupt her with the card stun. So there's a lot of answers to her. So in the arena, at least at the base arena sense of things, she doesn't really feel very spectacular because her kit is very strong, provided you don't get interrupted. On top of all the units that can counter her, in arena itself there's actually an artifact at least in base arena called confining spell confining spell can root her in place preventing her from doing her ultimate right preventing her from moving which makes her i would say quite vulnerable to a lot of situations so that's why if you're at the high level or if your enemies have a lot of control or simply the meta is not friendly to her or the afk stage is not friendly to her she's not going to perform as well 
right but does that mean that she's bad no it's because she's countered in those situations so i think from a player's point of view or from somebody who is team building who loves team building the idea to make Talin work is to ensure that you build a situation where she can unleash her skills freely she can channel her ultimate limitlessly so in certain dream round bosses she will be quite powerful because the bosses don't have any ways to counter her there's no way to silence her stun her or stop her from doing anything okay that being said uh since i talked about dream realm um uh, i'm just gonna talk about uh why talin doesn't seem so good in dream realm so yesterday we had the uh, lone gaze so for lone gaze case right lone gaze doesn't have any stun none of lone gaze mechanics actually counters talin directly but for alpha best case right talin is heavily countered let me explain why so if we look at the mechanics of the boss or we look at the bosses individually i can tell you all of these six bosses three of the bosses counters talin heavily so alpha bear is one necro dragon is one and snow stomper is one so let me explain why alpha bear counters her so talin is a unit that relies a lot on healing from the ally healing from herself as well as just healing in general so she's a unit that wants to play with her hp going up and down but against alpha bear healing is reduced massively so she can't actually manipulate her hp as well like she'll be losing more hp than she's getting back from the heals itself so obviously she's not gonna stay on the field she's gonna be in the egg form more or she's gonna die more often and therefore reducing her efficiency so that's why she's countered in alpha bear so next right why is she countered in necro dragon necro dragon right is a boss where you need to run units that are highly mobile so talin is going to stand on the spot to channel her ultimate so she's gonna get debuffed she's gonna lose damage she's gonna become weaker to like all the like uh, damage from the boss because of the increase in damage all the different debuffs that the boss can apply so she's gonna be countered there right for snow stomper's case more than 80 percent of the fight she can't channel her skills so obviously she's not gonna do damage and she's not gonna be good right no healers can heal when they're silenced so she's not gonna be good for snow stomper so out of these six bosses she's really proven to be good for long gaze i have a good prediction that she's gonna be pretty meta for both skyclops and king croaker so out of six bosses being good and probably meta for three of them is actually a really good result so is she a bad unit obviously she's not the best for alpha bear but in terms of dream round style things being in good damage or the meta team range for three of the six bosses i'll say is pretty decent okay now if we go into the arena side of things i will say the current normal arena meta simply doesn't fit her right um the reason is simple in the arena meta right now there's just a bunch of control units right just now i mentioned earlier we have Arden, iron heck skyita just counters her hits now and uh there's also a bunch of like a stuns from like weird ass units like damien uh even units like uh, our dear carolina can freeze her and lock her in place so there is a lot of answers to prevent her from doing what she wants to do even one of the most used artifact confining spell is going to counter her because she's not going to move and her attack range usually position her at a very vulnerable position to confining spells specifically so for normal arena at least with the current meta she's not that good right i'll be honest with you guys even if your enemies is are not running skalita right skyla is 100 her counter like her kid how she wants to play will be countered by skyla right skyla can stun her skyla kicks her out prevents her from reviving etc etc but even if your enemy doesn't have skyla she still can't fully do what she wants to do because there's just a lot of units in the meta that counters her so obviously if you're using her in normal arena she's gonna be quite mediocre to be honest because uh until a very powerful optimal comp to make her work comes into being right right now she's a good to have unit but a unit that has a lot of answers to in the arena side of things however in the supreme arena side of things it will be a completely different case because um as much as you can have control in one team in normal arena in supreme arena you have to split your teams up into three different teams so yes people can still counter her with control in one team but then you can build two teams that are weak to control and 
your enemies have to choose, right? Do I use control to counter the Talin team or do I use control to counter the other team? So this forces them to make a choice. So that's one good thing that I think Skyta can do. Just a little bit more flexibility. And at the same time, despite her not being this Omi potent deficit pusher for AFK stage itself, I do think that moving forward, her infinite uh, revives as well as her ability to revive key targets on the front line would prove to be useful for deficit pushing or future PVE content because um, I think you guys probably know why Torrent is OP, right? Other than just being a unit that deals damage, other than being a tanker, he also has multiple lives. So you can play around the ability to come back multiple times to use him to tank at specific positions or hold the fort at specific positions so that your backline is safe. You can basically do the same thing with Talin. And honestly speaking, that's not a bad trade, right? Any unit that has a very unique skill set is not going to be replaced too easily although talin's case will be a little bit more costly so for those of you guys who are still holding on to your resources and thinking whether or not you should dump on her you might want to wait a little bit more because uh, only time will tell whether or not she's generally versatile so that's it right uh is she a bad unit no i do think that she's op but she's op provided that you have a situation that could allow her to do what she wants which might not be easy on certain game modes but is pretty achievable on others so that's all i want to say for this video right to explain the duality in short i think talin is a good unit right but how good or op she is we still have to test out more before i could give you guys an answer so will she be a sound investment i think from a longevity point of view due to the uniqueness of her skill set i do think that she will have longevity but how good will she be let's wait for the results after i test them myself thank you very much for tuning in do remember to like and subscribe to see more afk journey videos from the channel and i'll see you guys again in my next video bye guys